what about on game day? You know, like coaches are known for, uh, you know, be having the ability to be able to adapt the strategy on the fly. Um, do you have some sort of experiences or, or memorable moments where you've noticed the best coaches have that ability, and and what could be the difference between perhaps the coaches that are develop still developing their craft? Um, is it a reaction thing? Is it collaboration and your connection with your assistant coaches, uh, or is it just simply like a coach's eye that takes experience? Um, no, I, I tell you what happened. Out of a worldwide pandemic, it was the best three months I've ever had in my life. Uh, in terms of, I had I was able to do my study, but we'd go to the teams and been with the referees. You got they use referees for scrimmaging and stuff, but to mm -hmm. watch the coaches work with their players. So when you've getting the head coach and he's refereeing games and and they're getting upset and they're telling them where to go and stuff like that, um, he really challenges them and he gets to know them and he knows their thresholds and who's going to bust and their resilience levels. So it's it's been a part. And interesting enough, we, we, we collect data on everything. We get subjective data, objective data. And, he, and, and one of his quotes to me was, Boyley, I'm not being a smart ass here. I've been coaching for X amount of years. I know when someone's not happy. I know when they're sad because I can see it on their face. I walk around and I watch them. Do you think for someone that uh, is striving towards being a head coach or perhaps a high-performance manager, are there um, strategies or things that you can be doing to help prepare you for that? Or is it just simply being in the role uh, to get I, that experience? Um, being in the role is one thing, but I think you need to have some sort of academic um, qualifications now. And even with the, I'm also on the board of the ASCA, um, but we've put in leadership modules in our high performance, um, in our act, uh, level three coaching. And it's been critical in marking their papers, their workbooks. Um, they're all just so surprised and that was the biggest module that they've learned from, you know, emotional intelligence and the need to, um, and I've got another quote here, but basically what the quote is, Boyley, you know, used to be a time where we used to th give them three slaps around the head and now you've got to give them three cuddles. And that's exactly the way they are now. You just can't browse on them because you get in trouble. Um, so it's just a, a new world that we've got to adapt to. Why do you think... The, the demand for, for leadership courses and emotional intelligence courses um, is is so much more, I guess, relevant now these days compared to maybe 20 years ago. Um, like where did that sort of shift happen? Was there some things that were happening that people weren't happy with the standards or is it because the teams are bigger, like you mentioned, from four staff to 12 to 20 staff? So is it a different environment, do you think, different demands on the role or...? Are there some other things that... Well, yeah, when you go from having a staff of three or four to um, 27 staff and 35 players, the role gets a lot bigger. And, and because the game gets faster and now we've got all the sports science and technology, um, you've got more bodies to look after. And the bigger span of control means that, you've, you know, you've really, you're tied for time. And, you know, the head coach is the first there and the last to leave. At, at, at what I'm saying, they're the real deal clubs. So, mm -hmm. and societal changes has got that way. And you mentioned cognitive st studies for those um, that haven't read any papers or might not be aware of what what all that means. What what are what's the interest for yourself in looking into sort of decision making and cognitive um, decision making for for the athletes, but but also high performance managers yeah. and head coaches. Yeah, well, I've been involved in the game for for forty years and. And when I come to the referees, I had no concept of them. Now, they were a necessary evil. I've got that many res that much respect for them now because um, everybody hates them. You know, they, they, they get abused and they've done about 2,000 games before we get here. And we train them hard, but they've still got to, they've got to have that cognitive ability. They're making 1,300 decisions a game. Um, and they're, they're that busy there and they've got the captain's challenge, six again tackles. Um, they go count their penalties. They've got to make sure that the guys they've got to control the game and make it a spectacle for the public. And that um, team first mentality. Uh, what does that look like in terms of actionables? Do you think from it from the uh, sort of athlete's point of view? Well, they, they, it's it's about training when you don't want to train. It's about caring about other players in the team. It's about having a crack in the gym all the time. Um, you know, I don't feel good today. Well, ask those other 17 players if you can take it easy today. 
uh, if they say yes, we'll talk about it. <laughs> um, that was my response. Or you're playing against a guy on the weekend, do you think he's lifting 50%? Um, so there's a lot of a lot of things in there that you, and the reactions about team first, don't be selfish. Um, it's so important. You just got to keep on top on top of it. But again, as coaches, um, we, we've got to lead by example. It's not what we say; it's what we do.